When we create an image view in SwiftUI, it'll automatically size itself according to the dimensions of its contents. For example, if your picture is 1000 pixels wide and 500 pixels high, that's how big it'll appear on the screen. This is sometimes what you want, but mostly you want it to appear at a smaller size. So I'll show you how that can be done. But I'll also show you how to make an image fit some amount of the user's screen by using a relative sizing rather than a fixed sizing. First things first, add an image to your asset catalog in your project. I have one here already called example. Choose your own now, drag it on in there, remember its name or call it example if you want to. The only requirement is it be big, bigger than an iPhone screen. Once that's done, go back to the content view. Let's draw the image onto the screen. I'll replace this code here with just image example like that. You'll see it fills the screen fully. Now, when you're using fixed image names like this one here, like example, you can actually f uh, replace this string with an Xcode constant that's made for you from your asset catalog. So I can say image dot example, lowercase e now, and get the same result here. It's much safer than using strings. There's no typos and stuff. It's checked by the compiler. Now, even in the preview here, you can see this is way too big for my little iPhone screen here. Uh, you can see it goes right the way edge to edge, including under the dynamic island and so forth. You might think, well, images have the same frame modifier as other views. So I'll just make it smaller by saying it's got a frame width of 300 and height of 300. And that's not going to work. Nothing's changed here. Your image will still appear to be its full original size. Now, if you want to know why, you want to change Xcode's preview mode. It's one of these options down here. This one on the left here, the blue one that's active right now is the live mode. That's the default mode. Change the one to the right, which is selectable. This mode here. And now you're going to see we have this blue box here. It's now showing us at the selection level every view on our screen. Uh, we can't interact with it anymore. We can select stuff. If you want, you want to go back to the live mode to get it back to the original mode. But for now, stay in selectable mode. What you'll see is this blue box. And this blue box matters. That is a 300 by 300 blue box. That is the exact frame. What you're seeing here is the image's frame has been set correctly. But the content of the image, these pixels are here for Singapore Changi Airport are still shown at its original size. Now try changing it to this same frame, but then dot clipped. And now you'll see things clearly. Our image view is indeed being sized down to 300 by 300, but it's now it's forced to stay inside there. The contents were overlapping fully, unresized, but the box was small, and now it's being clipped inside that frame. That is not really what we wanted, okay? We want the image actually sized down to that size. And to do that, you want to say, actually, I'll use a resizable image. And now it's better, but only just, right? The image is now being resized correctly into the 300 by 300 box, but it's probably looking squashed. Uh, my image was not square, so it is slightly squashed. If I change it down to say width 200, or with 100, you'll see exactly what I mean here. It's keeping all the pixels being drawn, but in increasingly small space. To fix this, we've got to ask the image to resize itself proportionally. And that's done using two modifiers, scale to fit and scaled to fill. The first of these, scale to fit, means make sure the entire image fits inside its frame, even if it means leaving some parts of the view empty at top and bottom or left and right. On the other hand, scale to fill means fill all the frame with a picture, even if that means some parts hanging out. Try them both yourself, see what, see what I mean here. We'll do a resizable image, then scaled to fit. And now you'll see the blue box remains square. That's this frame here. But the image contents sit fully inside there with some blank space at top and bottom for me. That's a correct aspect ratio for my picture. Alternatively, scale to fill. It now overlaps the picture slightly because it goes beyond, it overflows, sorry, the picture frame. 
top and bottom are exactly on, but left and right are too big, so they go up slightly over. So both useful depending on what you want here. Now all these work great when you have a fixed size in mind. I want exactly 300 by 300, whatever it is, it does a really good job here. You can see it will fit inside that frame with scale to fit perfectly. But sometimes you don't want that. So, you know, fine, rather than you saying exactly 300 points wide or high, you want to say actually be 80% uh, of the width of the screen. So like most of the screen, but not all the screen, for example. And rather than having a uh, specific frame like this, Swift UI has got a completely different modifier called container relative frame. that lets us get the exact result we want. Now the container part might be the whole screen like it is here, but it might also be part of the screen. For example, the views immediate parent. Maybe there's a bunch of other views in here, some tech and some other images in a V stack, for example, is our immediate parent is the frame we're working with here. We're gonna look into much more of this later on in project 18, all about layout and geometry. But for now, we'll make it do exactly one thing to make this image be 80% uh, of the available width of our screen. So we'll leave resizable, we'll leave scale to fit, and we'll change the frame to be container relative frame. And I'm gonna say the axes are dot horizontal, and the length, I'll say, give me the size and the axis coming in, and then send back size star 0.8. We'll get that. So it's now correctly making sure it is exactly eight tenths of the width of my view here. Let's break this code down a little bit. What we're saying is we want to give this image view here a frame relative to its container size. In our case, there is a container, it's the whole screen, so relative to the whole screen width here. And we're asking for just the horizontal sizing. You can do both if you want to, we're not doing that right now, more than that in a moment. So give me a relative horizontal size compared to my parent. And then Swift UI will run this code here, this little closure, we're given a size and an axis. Now for us here in this code, the axis will always be horizontal. That's the only one we're working with. But this matters more, of course, if you have relative horizontal and vertical sizes. So we'll say, okay, here's the axis vertical, here's the axis horizontal, what should the size be both ways? For us, just horizontal, just horizontal, that's fine. The size value is the actual measured size of the parent view. In our case, the full screen width will be given to us as some number. And it's our job to send back the size we want for this axis, our horizontal size. So we're sending back 0.8, 80% of our container size of width. Again, we don't have to specify our height here. This is enough for us because SwiftUI knows enough already to automatically figure out the correct layout for our view. It knows the original width, it knows our target width, size 1.8, it knows uh, the height should be scale to fit, da, da, da. it'll do a great job automatically for us.